Recently, I've been playing, hey, scrub that, I have been completely addicted to Domekeeper. After playing the demo on the floor at EGX and then the demo at home too before being sent the game code itself from the publisher, so far I've managed to rack up a stupid amount of hours into this game in such a short space of time. And the crazy thing is, less than 48 hours ago as of the scripting of this review, I had no idea that this game existed. In short, Domekeeper is stupidly addictive and if you're anything like me, it's going to get a hold of you too. On one hand, the game takes its inspiration from classics such as Dig Dug, Steamwell Dig and Boulder Dash, a complete history's on the way for that one by the way guys. And on the other hand, you've got uh, Missile Command, Tempest, Galactic Protector. Either way, you've got your classic arcade game and home computer games smashed together to make, as already stated, one hell of an addictive video game. Domekeeper starts with your ship crashing down onto an unknown planet, landing on and presumably killing one of the planet's weird shadow inhabitants as a small dome covers the dead body. From here, without any real instructions I might add, you make your way down underground, drilling away and exploring before you very quickly discover some gold. With the ability to lasso these gold fragments onto yourself, the more you add, the slower you go, you drag them back up to your dome and repeat. Shortly after, your glass dome comes under attack, so you make your way back up to your dome, control the agonizingly slow laser, and destroy the freakishly scary looking <coughs> enemies before you do it all again. Digging deeper and deeper whilst fighting off wave after wave of enemies that are of course getting faster, stronger and arriving in bigger batches. As you may have guessed, the way you do this is by using these gold fragments and other harder to find colourful resources that you brought back to your dome which can then be used to upgrade pretty much everything. Do you want your dome to be stronger? Do you want your laser to be more powerful? Faster? Your little murdering protagonist? What about them? Perhaps you want them to carry more resources? Possibly move around faster? You can add display options to let you know when enemies are arriving and <laughs> don't forget, it's probably a good idea to add a health bar to the dome as well. It's something you're going to have to experiment with because obviously the game doesn't give you enough resources to be able to do it all. And that is Domekeeper in a nutshell. By this point in the video, you've already probably worked out if this game is for you, and if it is for you, you're definitely gonna get addicted. Because in the game, as you play, you get to unlock different abilities for your dome. The demo that's available on Steam gives a sort of tree that you will need to water so that it provides fruits that can be used to speed up your character for a short while, all Super mario styly. Whilst in the full game, you have other abilities that give the dome a shield. Others offer a way to change the weather for a short time and therefore warn off the shadow things periodically. And of course, you've got loads of other little extras too, which I will not spoil as I'm yet to uncover most of them myself in the full game. You can also find small relics underground that offer you a choice between three randomly assigned upgrades like sonar to discover nearby resources, a bomb creation station, an elevator, portal-like teleportation devices, pets that are going to be digging on your behalf, crazy amounts more, and what's more mind-boggling is that every single thing that I've just mentioned can of course also be upgraded individually back at your dome. And don't worry, I'm not going to be showing off what happens when you actually complete a stage in this game. All I will say is that you need to find something down below, and when you do, it's game over. The good kind of game over at least. Now as stated, I have put a lot of time into this game, primarily because it's fusing together so many genres that I really, really like, and most importantly, it's doing it really, really well. However, I will say this. I am finally seeing a possible end to the sleepless nights. 
This is the part of the video where I, an entitled YouTuber, moans about a game that costs a shade over a tenner, not offering enough for me even though I've already dropped well over 20 hours into it. You see, as great as the game is, it is pretty much just this. Sure, I still have more abilities to unlock and some of the harder modifiers I'm yet to complete, but we have all played addictive games like this before, right? You know, risk, upgrade and repeat types of games tend to get a hold of you so tight until one day after you do them over and over and over again, you simply stop playing. Will this be another one of those games that's so incredibly addictive and simple that I play over and over and over again until I just stop playing again? Or is it going to be one of those games that does such a good job like Binding of Isaac, a game that I continue to come back to year after year and I play quite often? If the developer is able to continue adding to this little masterpiece, then I do see it as a game with legs that will stand the test of time. Adding new abilities and unlockables hidden within the dirt, changing the character that you actually play as, different enemies, different planets. The art style of the promo guys for this video is absolutely gorgeous and I would love to see a fully fleshed out story mode with these cutscenes between levels. Imagine a plot twist like Sing Server where it turns out that you are the villain all along. And heck, can you just imagine how addictively brilliant this game would be in multiplayer? Taking turns to look after the dome and then working together to make the laser move faster or whatever. Screaming left, 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 no, 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 right. It's a mode that needs to be added in a future update as it really will take this game to the next level. With all that said, already as it is, this game is well worth the asking price. It is a genuinely fantastic game, but with more time for someone like me, this game could move into the category of legendary indie title, getting itself absurd amounts of extra tat chucked in when a company like Limited Run no doubt get their grubby mitts on it. And by the way, guys, that's not a stab at Limited Run or anything because I would probably buy that. But again, this is just me wanting more, more from a game that has offered so much already. I do see a bright future from this game, especially when I unlock the prestige mode that requires you to voluntarily get rid of some of your resources instead of spending them. The more you get rid of, the harder the game will obviously be, but the higher your score will be in an online leaderboard. Yep, not to sound like a broken record, but when you unlock this game mode, the game becomes even more addictive. Final thoughts time, guys. You know when you come across those individuals, uh, gaming, music, movies, whatever, that always moan that games aren't as good as they were back in the day, they don't make games like they used to? Well, you can go up to those people and tell them to shove it. Domekeeper is the perfect example of a classic video game created in a classic way because it's created mostly by one guy with a family on his own in his bedroom at the weekends and evenings when he had some free time. This bedroom coder created Dome Romantic as it was originally known, an itch.io game that I am literally playing here in a browser and it has all of its roguelike elements still intact. Would you look at this? This was until one day that he got the attention of a publisher on Twitter and turned this into this much beefier game. I mean, come on guys, just look at the credits for this. Besides the publishers and the playtesters, you can fit the rest of the development team on the back of a postage stamp. It's seriously impressive stuff. So when your annoying hipster friend tries to convince you that they don't make games like they used to, show them this. This absolute textbook definition of classic and addictive gameplay mechanics made the classic way, just using slightly newer methods and gameplay engines to do so. And if the developer of Domekeeper continues on this path of upgrading Domekeeper, which I'm pretty sure he will do by the way, going by yet to unlock features in the menu, then this game could possibly move into the realm of legendary indie game status. Massive thanks for the code Raw Fury, links will be down below if you want to go and check out the demo, the full game, the origins of the game over on itch.io and a very underviewed interview with the developer over on Shack News. Tell them Slopes Game Room sent ya. Bye bye.